Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show OSA, that is the Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this recovering period of COVID-19 situation. Dear viewers, today our topic is uh, treating uh, Shratska type 5 and 6, upper tibial fractures, my method with special tips and tricks. And this my method main is no other than the Professor L. Prokarsar from India. Today our honorable speaker is the one of the scientists of uh, subcontinent reason, Professor El Prokarsar. I would like to request Professor El Prokarsar to join with us. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure that Dr. Bari has invited me for this conference. And I'm extremely grateful to the organizers to have given me this opportunity. In the next 25 minutes, we will see something short and sweet, hopefully, which will keep your interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, dear viewers, we have a uh, learned academic expert with us. Uh, one of them is uh, Professor Mufakarul Barisar, the legendary legendary surgeon from Bangladesh. I would like to request Professor Mufakarul Barisar to join with us. So, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Darby. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon. Now, I would like to request okay. uh, Professor Novikov, sir from Kurgan, Russia, the highly academician person, Professor Novikov, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Omar, sir, from Kurdistan, Iraq. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And now, I would like to request another enthusiastic Alexander Surgeon from Patna, India, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir. Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, would you please join with us? Thank you, and good afternoon, Dr. Tanvir. Greetings from India. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, today our topic is uh, treating Shatska type 5 and 6, upper tibial fracture, by Professor El Prokasar. Now, I would like to request our honorable speaker to uh, share his screen. Sir, would you please uh, share your screen and start your presentation, sir, please. Thank you, Tanvir. I am sharing my screen. Here we go. There is some time lag in sharing, but it is coming. One minute. It says sharing your screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, not, yes. sir, not yet, sir. It's coming. It's coming, sir. <coughs> yes, it's come. It's come. It's come. It's come. It's come. It's come. Uh, I'm not very used to. One minute. There we go. Yes, sir. absolutely fantastic. Is the first slide visible? Yes, sir. And it's clear? completely visible. And yes, sir. And my audio is also yes, clear. Yes. Everything is fine, thank sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanvir. And thank you very much, Dr. Professor Bari and Dr. Shantan Loda and other members. And my special thanks to all viewers who have come here listen to me speak. My talk will be on modern rational management of charge curve 5 and 6 upper tibial fractures. This is the problem which we normally see due to high velocity accidents, motorcycle accidents, car and bike accidents and similar situations. And this is a common solution which is advocated in the textbooks, propagated by the AO. This is only a single plate. I have seen double plates and triple plates all infected and pouring pus. Is this the correct solution? I doubt if this is the correct solution. I firmly believe the textbooks are wrong and commerce is teaching wrong things to young surgeon. Single and double plates or reverse Eiffel Towers should be banned for such fractures. An all wire Elizabeth construct should not only be the preferred, but 
the only method recommended in the modern times from this to this and final results like this so if we can go back this is what the fracture is this is how it has been managed and this is the final result and this is not difficult very few decisions are to be made pre operatively based on ct scans and x rays question 1 whether to use a prefabricated or progressive concept 2 whether to use a knee spanning or tibia only and 3 whether on traction table or free hand when to use a fracture table when the fracture is impacted and disimpaction is needed a calcanean pin or a calcanean wire with a half ring on a traction table helps in distraction when not to use a fracture table when the fracture is played and rux is needed by repeatedly flexing and extending the knee when to use a progressive construct when you are not sure what the what shape the final frame will take when you need to make a small window to elevate depressed fragments very rarely you need to use grafts and punch them out and you need to move the leg many times for flexion extend it that is the time when you need a progressive construct and when to use a prefabricated construct when you are sure that the traction will reduce the humpty dumpty when you have an accurate 3d ct views and you precisely decide on the frame design whenever you use a traction table you must use an open book construct in a prefabricated frame or use a progressive construct this is an example of an open book construct where a prefabricated frame is assembled on the table and the open book is closed and then it will be riveted so that we can start passing the wires so when the hip and ankle are fixed you simply cannot use a, a prefabricated locked construct it should either be a progressive construct or a pre prefabricated construct which is an open book what are the aims of management accurate valgus reduction earliest possible knee movements earliest return to knee function and the final attempt to get a normal knee joint my preferred method does not use shan spins does not use additional cancellous screws bone grafts very rarely and most of my frames are not knee spanning but they are just below knee this will be a different talk i won't be showing you what i can do and what i have done i won't be showing you results pre and post operative i'll show you two short videos and how i do a progressive construct and a prefabricated construct the first video will be a prefabricated construct on a fracture table the second video will be a progressive construct without a fracture table case one is a 37 year old lady with a high velocity motorcycle injury and case two is a 47 year old man with a high velocity automobile injury i am i'll just do the videos now one minute i have to because the videos were not playing i'll have to take one minute here we go this video i will one complete procedure of i am am i audible is the video clear
Yes, sir. Perfect, sir. Dr. Tanvir. We Dr. Can Tanvir. Hear, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, yes, sir. sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. You are completely clear? audible. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Dr. Tanvir, can you hear me? Is the video clear? Yes, sir. Dr. I can Tanvir. hear you, sir. Dr. Bari, is my screen visible? You go, no problem. Is yes, my sir. screen yes, sir. visible? Please. And is my audio clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are completely audible, sir. Oh, you're mute. You, you, I can't you hear you, Tanvir. Yes, I can't hear you, Tanvir. Please you unmute, unmute your audio. Sir. Can you hear me? Just show me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Dr. Bari just... Ah, good, good, good. So back to my video. Good, good. So now this is a patient who is a lady who has a shortcut tick six type of uh, fracture. <coughs> and here, here is a prefabricated construct which I am making the night before in my bedroom. So one is a oval ring, one is a round ring and one is a, a 5 8 ring. And this is a prefabricated construct which I have taken measurements on the table and of the opposite limb. And you can see it's a very, very simple frame with a um, combination of arches, oval rings and a round ring with appropriate compression elements. The surgery is done under spinal anesthesia. The first part is the calcaneum. The foot is prepared. The calcaneum is cleaned. You can see the motorcycle abrasion. The silencer has burnt that lady's leg and you will, as you will see the video, you can see that the fracture heals before the skin uh, burn heals. That is less than 70 days. I am just using a half ring and we are tensioning the half ring, the wire on half ring and this half ring is anchored to a fracture table and then we can apply traction to reduce this fracture. So as we apply traction, we can see that the fracture gets reduced to some extent. We can increase the traction more and get a better reduction. Then the leg is cleaned and prepared in a standard manner. And I prefer to use disposable drapes, not the green cloth drapes, which are autoclaved, but the paper drapes, just the rail. And we can see the preparation is very standard from mid thigh to lower leg. Though we are going to cover the foot and ankle in the drapes, I prefer to drape them as an abundant caution. As an arthroplasty surgeon, I am very cautious about serility and you can see very special efforts being taken for serility, be it Elizarov or be it my other revision arthroplasty surgeries. As I am using a fracture table, I am using an open book construct you can see that the open book is closed on the table. The loose nuts are tightened and we complete this frame. Now this frame makes more sense. It has got two arches bolted on the top. Then it has got an oval ring below. Then it has got oblique supports and it has got tiny arches for drop wires. And then it has got a complete full ring below. This entire frame 
weighs only 280 grams because it is a lightweight aluminium frame and we are just locating the frame in the CM to see if it is the correct level. As it is an all wire construct, we are passing standard smooth wires, non olive wires from the medial to lateral, lateral to medial towards just a little above the fibular head and these are the reference wires to which the frame will be anchored. We need to pass the medial lateral reference wires on the first and last rings, anchor them to the rings, ensure that there is enough space anteriorly, posteriorly, medially and laterally and readjust the frame before passing the olive wires for compressing the assembly. The important lesson in any laser of fixation is that we must always have more space posteriorly than anteriorly. If your assembly is very close anteriorly, do not worry because swelling does not happen anteriorly, but the posterior part should be free. Likewise, I am using a 5 of 5 eighth of a ring so that we can start knee mobilization very early. So, these two reference wires in the proximal part are enough to give reference to my frame. In the process of tightening, I have seen that the frame has shifted and so hammering of the frame moves it back to position. I am using a dynamometric tensioner which I prefer on most occasions and if there is no space for a dynamometric tensioner, then I would normally use the Russian method to twist the nut to tension. I seldom use manual tensioners. You can see already the fracture is falling into place except for a lateral gap which needs to be fixed with a, which needs to be buttressed with an olive. After the proximal most ring, we go to the distal most ring and these two reference rings with just medial lateral wires without the anterior posterior wires will define the basic structure and framework of the Elizabeth frame we are using. Once the medial lateral and lateral medial wires are passed, we can pass the anterior posterior wires. The video is speeded up so that what has taken me an hour and quarter has been condensed into 10 minutes for the talk. And all Elizabeth surgeons who use an all wire construct are experts in safe corridors. So, we have to avoid all the neurovascular bundles and vital structures because we have used a tractor table. We cannot flex and extend the knee to relax the posterior quadrant. And you can see that the frame now takes its space. These are the drop wires which will be attached to the drop attachment that has been made already. The olive wires have not, not yet been started and here the tension we have used a straight plate only for pulling the olive wire and compressing the fracture. Now you can see that the drop wire will have compressed the fracture as you will see in the CM image. We have used close to six olive wires in the proximal fragment both medial laterally and lateral medially and a small nick is made in the skin to pass the olive wire in and again compress it from the opposite side. After the fracture is compressed, the wire is tensioned from this end to ensure that we have a well balanced assembly. This lateral view shows the generous amount of space posteriorly, though 
we have kept the frame quite close anteriorly because this is the most comfortable position for the patient this particular wire we don't have place to use a dynamometer tensioner so we have used the manual tensioner as we have used the russian method and we can see that the fracture is slowly falling into place and the gaps are compressing the repeated cm use multiple olive wires are the needed hour and we can see that we can get 0 to 90 degree flexion on the table this was a pre operative x ray and this is a post operative x ray and though the reduction is close to 95% and not 100% it looks very good in anterior posterior and lateral views and i have accepted this reduction on the 15th post operative day the patient has full knee movements loading of the joint and the patient is walking very comfortably and already showing good callus you can still see that her silencer burn on the foot <coughs> has not healed but the patient comes walking to my clinic on the 14th 15th day and is extremely comfortable why she is using a walker and loading the leg as best as she can yeah. now she is coming into my chamber and she is extremely happy and the results to me are more satisfactory than any plate she has come traveling in a car flexing her knee to 90 degrees on 45th post operative day we can see the fracture is nearing union from a walker the patient is ready to shift to a tripod and as she stays stays on the second floor i have already asked her to use the stairs and walk up and down you can see the smile on her face you can see the movements of the knee and it's only now that the silencer burns on a leg or healing with a tripod she is doing the stairs and she is extremely happy with the results and so are the relatives and attendants of the patient the frame that there she is she is loading the leg fully and the flexion is near full 67th post operative day less than 70 days we have dynamized the frame loosening all the threads all the nuts on the threaded rods allowing her to telescope it and walk so that we can know that she is ready for frame removal most of my shaskar 5 and 6 fractures are not kept on the frame for more than 90 days and very few of my frames are above knee you can see from the leg burn silence are burn the foot silence are burn that 67 days it has taken for the skin to heal already the knee has healed and with a dynamized frame if the patient is comfortable in 48 to 72 hours we can assume that the right time has come to remove the frame so i hope my recording and uh, video is visible because i am not able to see that happening but if any problems i know that my video will be uploaded that is the final frame after dynamization and that is her after removal of the frame and movements her state like this her uh, knee movements you can see there is a time of healing of the leg wound of the silencer burn and healing of the fracture are all within 80 days and there she is independently walking with a very mild leg i have now followed up this patient for 4 years she has absolutely no knee arthritis 
and she is extremely comfortable in her activities so this was a prefabricated construct for uh, that is the final x ray we can see that the x ray is satisfactory now i will go to the second video is a progressive construct and again high velocity trauma and one minute we can see a ct image that the knee is badly splayed both on the medial and lateral sides and a 3d ct shows a wide gap between the lateral condyle and the medial side this is a politician a vip from the neighboring state and was referred to me after a fasciotomy by local surgeon this needs a reduction meaning we need to squeeze the condyles together flex and extend the knee multiple times the fasciotomy was very inadequate improperly done but fortunately the patient did not develop a compartment syndrome multiple manual reduction attempts have reduced the fracture except for a very small uh depression in the plateau we passed the first smooth wire and then an olive wire and compressed the fragment this is a progressive construct and so it has not been done on fracture table we can see that two arches have been bolted to make the proximal part and i first reduced the fracture then i added just one single ring with cross wires distally to reinforce the frame i added two arches and i could get a close to 90 degree flexion the fracture is very stable however i have used seven wires in the proximal one ordinary wire and six olive wires and we have got a fairly congruent article reduction this is the patient who is walking on day 1 post operative in the ward loading his leg as best as possible and this is him on the 15th post operative day on his visit to my clinic again he traveled in his car sitting in the back seat and was very comfortable in flexing his knee to 90 degrees this is the patient one month post operative and he is walking with a type of tripod but he is able to load his leg fully and is able to lift the tripod up and walk unassisted to show me how happy he is walking and then as the patient was a little over enthusiastic he sent me a video driving his own car in 6 weeks that is the magic of elizorov that we encourage function from day one the frames are not heavy the patients are encouraged to do their social activities and activities of daily living and they are allowed to do a full weight bearing from day one this is the status in 90 days the patient is able to close to 90 degree flexion and a time has come for us to dynamize the frame and give him 72 hours to see if the frame is ready for removal the frame is ready for removal so we have removed the frame the wires have not yet been pulled out we have checked the stability of the fracture and because there are multiple one the patient is a little apprehensive i am giving a local anesthetic at both exit and entry points so that i can that we do not try to struggle to pull the olive from the opposite end 
I have given him a single layer protective leg gaiter for two weeks for his satisfaction and mine. Though this sort of protective cast is not necessary and I do not use them these days. This patient has been followed up for close to seven years and has done very well and even now sends me festival greetings. This is more like a, this is the patient's result in six months when he came to visit me. That is his movement and he is able to sit cross-legged and is able to squat and he is an extremely happy and satisfied patient. And coming back to our slides. What are the take-home messages? Number one, Elizarov is the best and most preferred method of managing upper table fractures. Number two, double plating and metal in such cases and in such superficial area is fraught with complications. The procedure and methods are very easy to learn and well duplicatable by every surgeon, a beginner or advanced. I thank you very, very much for giving me this opportunity, for being in your presence and presenting this lecture. Thank you very much and I shall stop the screen and hope that you have all been able to see and hear properly. I would like to hear from the faculty if there were any mistakes or errors in my presentation and if there are any questions, I will be very happy to take them. Thank you very much. Thanks Professor Bari and his team for a wonderful opportunity for me and thankfully I have finished in 28 minutes with a little lesser than my allotted time. Thank you. Thank you very much sir for your uh, excellent presentation. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Professor uh, Novikov sir. Novikov sir, can you hear? Can you hear me, sir? Novikov sir. Yes, yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you. Now. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I think uh, Novikov sir can't hear us as because of some sort of network problem is there. Uh, Professor Omar sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Then uh, uh, please uh, share your knowledge regarding the presentation, sir. First question can I ask you, was that uh, talk clear, audible and the slides go well? Yes, sir. The slides were no excellent. Yes. Yes. No, no interruptions, sir. Okay, no you. interruptions. Absolutely fantastic, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Omar, sir, do you have any questions or uh, do you have any knowledge sharing regarding the presentation, sir? Uh, Professor Amur sir, you have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. We can yes. hear you, sir. What about complications? What about complications? Any complication happens? I have till now done close to 64 cases of uh, charge cut 5 and 6. I've used an all wire frame in all cases. No chance spins and use this method only. And in about eight to ten cases, I have had a little stiffness of the knee that they cannot do squatting. So it comes up to 90 degrees, a little more than 90 degrees, they are not able to do. There will be no pentrack infection, and they are all happy and grateful. Properly okay. done, Elizabeth. Seldom has any complications. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very Congratulations. much. Sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Mufakarul Barisa to share his knowledge regarding the presentation, sir. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Thanks, Il Prakash. <coughs> for introducing your experience regarding the Shaska type 5 and 6. And uh, last part of your lecture, I was out of the scenario. I was disconnected. That's why I could not follow. Uh, but your 
case number one that I have seen, uh, you are using all the time, most of the time, free permutated frame or you love to do the uh, without prefabricated frame. Which one you love to do? And, uh, Actually. Uh, and uh, during prefabricated frame, do you face any problem with the apparatus and putting the wires when you are using the prefabricated frame? This is number one. And uh, do you have any difference between the pre and post without prefabricated? How do you feel uh, with this Silizar of apparatus? This is my question. Excellent question. Initially, I started doing only progressive construct, which is ring by ring. Then I realized that the surgical time was getting very much prolonged. And in most cases, the end frame was very similar to what I had imagined before I started. So I started experimenting with prefabrication. <clears throat> and I spent a lot of time before surgery in my bedroom thinking and designing the frame. And many times I keep the frame on the patient's normal leg and take an X-ray and look at Siam views also the previous day and do modifications. And I am always ready to change the frame if needed. So basically, whenever I find that one of the rings is not in the right position or one of the arches is not in the right position, I will add drop wires and adjust the wires accordingly. So I must bring the frame to the wire, not the wire to the frame. That is the basic Elizabeth principle. So I could realize that if I was using a progressive construct, if I am taking one and a half hours to do an Elizabeth of surgery with a prefabricated construct, I was doing it in 45 minutes. So when the time constraint came, as I work in private practice, we pay for the operation theater by the hour. Likewise, I am getting older, so I get tired after one and a half hour surgery. So I realize that prefabricated is a shortcut. <coughs> However, in my lecture, I have clearly said that the original laser way is a progressive construct. Prefabricated is a shortcut. Prefab is applicable to close to 75% of cases. But 25% difficult cases where we need reduction before the frame application, we have to have a progressive construct. Yes. All laser purists will use an all wire progressive construct. Only these newfangled surgeons will use chance pens and all sorts of fancy gadgets. Mm. And uh, COVs and computer software and all. Old people like you and me are very happy with wires in Elizabeth, which gives very good results. Hope that answers your question. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, do you have any more questions or queries uh, regarding the presentations? Professor Mafakarul Bari, sir. So, uh, in your first slide, second slide, the writings, what you have written, I agree with you. We must convey the, our, you know, uh, message to the young budding orthopedic surgeons, the Shaska type five and six. If you go for plating, either buttressing one or two, you'll see 25% infection. It is written in Campbell. And you know, the AO people, they are still advocating for going for five and six. This is a complex TBL plateau fracture. Elizar is the best option. My message is because you are using only the biocompatible thin wires. Either you can use the smooth 1.5, 1.8 or one olive wires. And it gives a fantastic result. And the day one, after day two or three days, you can mobilize your leg. And compartment syndrome in case of five and six, the skin abrasion is very common. When you go, you should have to wait for when you are going for plating, you should have to wait for five, six or seven days. By this time, the problem arises. That's why my observation and five and six, even one, two, three, four, five and six, 
I as the Eliezer Sergeant, initially I did this with his crew, you know, with planning also. Now I love to do with all cases, five and six, obviously Eliezer. And sometimes with this, I can uh, go for plating and his crews. So message is what you have shown today for the young doctors, five and six, better go for Eliezer. Thank you so much. Always go for Eliezer, not better. Campbell no, must be always changed. Go for yes. Yes. Always go for Eliezer. Yes, I am agree. Always and go for if you are not, if you are not confident, refer. Don't no, refer. If you are not confident, I'm refer confident. to Eliezer. Exactly. Yes. That is my message today. That's all. Yes. Yes. Uh, what, thank you. Whatever thank you very much, sir. Novikov. Uh, Sir, uh, I think Navikov sir can't hear us, sir, as because of some sort of network problem. Uh, he cannot hear us properly. Uh, so he no cannot because. reply us. No, Vikov. No. No, sir. He, he can't. can't. He can't, sir. Oh. But he has stayed with us he and listened to the talk good enough. He can see yes, the recording. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Shamsaruddha sir to uh, say something regarding the presentation and sharing his knowledge also. Thank you, Dr. Tanmay. <coughs> First of all, I would really like to thank Dr. El Prakash for coming and privileging us in our uh, program. And uh, I really congratulate Baris sir and Dr. Tanmay that we are having our 50th uh, series of lecture this day. And it's a real privilege that I'm sitting in front of three uh, legends from three continents. It's a real great day for us. So, uh, regarding the cases of uh, Elizabeth in the Schatzkas type, sir, I've been using Elizabeth frequently in uh, Schatzkas type 5 6 uh, cases because uh, if uh, we have been facing blisters, compound injuries, compartments, evidence coming out, so it gives excellent results and wonderful results. Uh, I have uh, uh, two questions from my side and one question from YouTube, sir. My first question, as I uh, always discussed, uh, already discussed in our Elizabeth group, that uh, it doesn't matter, matter of discussion that uh, in uh, proximal TBA fractures, Sir, uh, Prakash, sir, what is your take on uh, use of spanning, spanning in the dish of femur ring, sir? What happens is, our John Chandni has always said, when the bone breaks, ligament doesn't tear. When the ligament tear, bone doesn't break. So, if the femur is intact, it's only yes. a tibial fracture, the ligaments are intact. So, if you're able to stabilize the tibia, why do you need to span the femur? For your mental satisfaction and you are going to keep exactly. it stiff for six weeks and only for ideological satisfaction and you make a longer frame. So 95% of my frames in such fractures are below me. I do not span, I don't use a hinge and I have never had any laxity. It is very rare to have ligament tear as well as bony breakage together. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, I really agree with you, sir, because I've been uh, not using spanning in any of my cases. It has been a matter of great discussion in our WhatsApp group, but I have not faced any problem with sp spanning. And uh, uh, my second question is, uh, I've been using uh, in many of cases five by eight rings in uh, the, the proximal rings, sir. What, uh, what do you say about that, sir? We should use a full ring or five by eight rings, sir. I can't hear the Please, please repeat the so, question. Uh, uh, I have been using in many of the cases uh, of possible uh, shots. I have been using five by eight rings as the first ring, sir, to avoid knee stiffness, sir. So, what is your take, sir? I always say that the first ring has to be a five eight or a seven yes, eight sir. ring, where you attach yes, two arches and just allow knee flexion. Second yes. ring has to be an oval ring, so that we have got much space in the back. Right. Third, fourth rings can be circular. Elizra is like a beautiful toy. Mechano said, you can adjust it and play in whatever way you want. And in that, now this also answers Dr. Bari's question. When you are doing a prefabricated construct, you are doing it at home. You are having a glass of drink or you are watching something and your mind is free. Patient is not there, anesthesia is not there. So you can keep on changing, changing, changing till you get a nice final frame. When you are doing in the theatre, patient is under anesthesia, assistants are there, everybody is watching you, the clock is ticking. And you have to hurry. So that is why I spend more time in fabricating the frame than the actual surgery. Not much literature is there on uh, advantages of prefabricated frame, but we should do one lecture sometime in future 
on prefabricated versus <coughs> progressive construct and if possible we'll invite dr mohammed yunus who is who is an expert on uh, prefabricated construct and we will listen to his talk on this subject thank you sir so we have uh, uh, one question from auto tv youtube it is from dr prafull harode and same question from dr vimal kumar gupta that uh, what do you do for posterior fragments posterior medial as well as posterior lateral fragments yeah that was number my question one, also sir that number one we reduce important key is to keep your thumb on the neurovascular bundle and go adjacent with an oliver people are very scared of posterior anterior and anterior posterior wires now we know that the femoral nerve comes down and at the popliteal fossa it spreads and goes down the anatomy is in our mind and we can always palpate even the most bulky patient by pushing the thumb we can palpate the neurovascular bundle to feel the pulsations and then adjust it to your thumb if you pass the wire you are near the vessel doesn't matter you won't cause an aneurysm most of bilateral surgeons are very scared of sciatic nerve and popliteal vessels but you must be unlucky to hit the vessel you must be really unlucky to hit the vessel if i show you some x rays of my frames we have got wires directly posterior and anterior nothing is happened to the patient is so happy dr bari will agree with me and he in this experience he would have done this himself so when a beginner is there he will be scared that as it is posterior corner posterior middle corner posterior lateral corner vessel bifurcating that is coming right in a position are go one millimeter this side go one millimeter this side right. i have gone right through the popliteal fossa in the popliteal fossa there are no vessels because everything is bifurcated so from popliteal fossa you can go oblique exactly. so we meet the let us see the hamstrings come down and in between go directly there is no harm new surgeons are taught shortcuts with chance screws in yes, unidirection which is through safe corridor they are scared of wires yes, these days i hardly see a single elevator surgeon doing proximal femurs with all wire construct putting a posterior anterior wire sitting under the table and drilling upstairs they are too scared but elevator is a wonderful machinery you must Learn the intricacies, and it will be like magic for you. Does this answer the yes, question? Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Even I uh, follow the same. I use the mini open, uh, put on wires, use sleeves, and uh, put buttress from uh, the posterior middle fragment with olives, sir. Exactly, That's sir. much easier because exactly when you are in doubt, make yeah. one centimeter inc incision, clear everything, exactly, put the wire properly. Exactly. There is no it harm. Gives, it gives very good buttress. Yes, sir. it gives very good buttress. Yeah. We have uh, one more question, sir, uh, from Dr. Muhammad Al Hasan Abdullah. He has asked when and how to assess for ligamentous laxity. In a short skirt six or five, we cannot assess ligamentous laxity because the bone is broken. And I think I answered the question previously. We must read Charnley's book on close treatment of common fractures. He says it's a rule in orthopedics that either the ligament is strong or the bone is strong. If the ligament breaks, bone doesn't break. If the bone breaks, ligament doesn't break. And that I have not. It has been not proved by cadaveric studies or anything. But that to me has stood true and stood correct all my life. So I can assess the ligamentous laxity after I put my frame and stabilize the fracture. Right. Now suppose I, I that has happened in five percent cases of mine, five or ten percent cases. When I fully done the tibial frame, I do the 90 degree flexion, then do medial lateral movements. I find that it is very lax. That case, of course, I do a spanning. Exactly. That's sir. a very rare. Exactly. Case. exactly, sir. So we can only assess after we put the tibial frame. Exactly, sir. I've I've done in one or two cases that after uh, fixing, we have seen the much of laxity. I've done a spanning ring, sir. That's what is advised. Even in the original book, also he says. Right. That knee spanning could be done after you finish the tibial work and assess the ligament stability and decide whether it has to be done or not. Right, sir. Uh, so Springer book by yeah. yes, yes, sir. No, the same, Springer same book by Lizard has not been translated yes, properly. Right, sir. And right. lot of his uh, pearls of wisdom are missing in English. But he has right, put sir. so many X-rays 
that by looking at the X-ray repeatedly, you can learn so much and so much. Right. So I have posted uh, our Elizabeth original book so many times, but people have never taken the trouble of reading it from cover to cover. To me, it's like Bible. Even now, I find something new there. Look at all those X-rays, and you learn something fantastic. Where he has passed the wires, how he has passed the wires, and that's the magic of Kurgan. And I extend the same question to Baris, sir. Sir, what is your take on uh, spanning the knee, sir, in the cases? Listen, we are talking all the time with Shaskar 5 and 6. And instead of that, you will get Shaskar type 7. What is that? Sometimes you get 6 with evulsion of the intercordular eminence. Sometimes you'll get that one. And in that cases, even 6, I personally use go for always fixed in the lower end of the fem femur for few days, for few days. Few days, how many a days? Three or four weeks. And five and six, I keep two and a half and three months. Two and a half and three months. By this time, you will get a very good regenerate bone. And consideration will be very fine. And Shaskar type six, and El Prakash rightly said, when you are getting bone fracture, the laxity, you will not be able to, you know, identify the, where is the laxity. And while your ligaments are intact, your bone is fractured or not. While your ligaments are intact, bone is not fractured or bone is fractured. So in this situation, sometimes I go for fixation of the lower end of the femur. And of course, the upper end of the tibia. This is my opinion. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shamsudha, sir, for a nice discussion and nice questions there. Thank and you. I would like you. to thank uh, Professor Mafakarul Bari, sir, uh, always helping us to arrange this type of academic program. And uh, this is a great day for Orthopedic Solution Academy as because of uh, this is the 50th program of Orthopedic Solution Academy. And uh, this is a, a virtual academic platform where we can share our knowledge, where we can gather our knowledge. And definitely from mm -hmm. different different continents, uh, many participants are participating uh, in our academy. And uh, that's a great thing as because of uh, knowledge has no boundary. And we can knowledge from uh, each and every corner of the world. And now I would like to thank uh, today's honorable speaker as because of uh, his uh, 50th program speaker of our Orthopedic Solution Academy, Professor El Prakasar. Uh, it's a great day uh, for all of us. And I'd like to thank Professor Omar sir, Professor Novikov sir, Dr. Shamsuruddha sir, and definitely the legendary Elizabeth Surgeon of Bangladesh, Professor Mofakarul Bari sir, for being with us. I'd thank like you. to thank Raj Subi for helping us uh, for arranging this type of academic program and definitely Renata Pharmaceuticals Limited for sponsoring our program. I'm Dr. Mohamed Anvirashav saying bye-bye today. Hope we'll connect to uh, in the coming Friday with another magical Elizabeth topic. Till then, I'd like to say bye-bye to all of you. Bye-bye. You are watching Raj TV, Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel. Oh, thank, okay. you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir, for you 50. 50, 50, very sir. good. 50, sir. 50. Oh, this is not a matter of joke, you know. 50. No, oi, 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 oi. Thanks, Shamsuruddha, Tanvir. The 50, oi, Ortho TV and uh, Raj TV. Very good. Definitely, and, sir. Uh, definitely. Really, really, it is, uh, you know, uh, very good. It was a very good program. No, because. No, because. <laughs> no, because I can't hear, sir. <laughs> no, because I can only watch.